We started from day one doing, using a permaculture process to analyze and observe what was going on on the site and then to decide what our goals were as a family now of four people. We have two children. It's an 1890s house. It's a, a very typical half acre lot that you'd find in a lot of residential areas um, here in the Northeast. Um, we have we're proximity to services. We can walk in and out of town. We have town water and town sewer. And over time, through a whole series of different design interventions, we've been making this building much more efficient. So we're down to using about 25% of the fossil fuels when we were using when we first came in. You know, disconnecting from the sewer system with a composting toilet and separating all of our plumbing out. So now we have all gray water plumbing and now we be able to do a gray water system. So the user uses the toilet, uses toilet paper, and then we have a bin of sawdust and now we just chase it with a scoop of sawdust. Um, and then it's closed, and that's it. Everything is by gravity. No pumps or anything. And our system is a urine separating toilet. So there's an area to the front of the commode that urine goes and has its own drain, and that urine goes into the gray water system. And then to the back side of the toilet, all the solids just fall down an eight inch tube, and they basically go into a large trash can on wheels. From the toilet, there's a piece of road culvert, just eight inch piece of road culvert that's smooth on the inside that travels 16 feet down. And then this pipe here is the vent. So there's a small four inch solar powered inline DC van, fan that vents up and out of the house. Um, and then this is just the containment box. It's just all stuff we had on hand, just recycled wood, things we had easily available. And inside is just uh, trash can. And the trash can's just jacked up on blocks. Um, we put a little bit of this kind of neoprene insulation around the top just to get a little bit of a seal, but it's that basic. Um, it's just pumped up into place and shimmed with some blocks and it sits there for three months. And, and it's really light, like kind of like forest duff layer because um, a lot of the water has actually left and evaporated. When it's full, I just pump up the trash can an inch, pull all the blocks out and pump and take it down. And then I roll it out to the garden and we have a compost bin that's just for humanure. And so it gets dumped in there. It gets covered with straw or whatever organic material we have, leaves and other things. So it's encapsulated. It continues to compost. We bring the bucket back inside and we start all over again. I think people are surprised it doesn't smell. I had a brother-in-law who stayed overnight one night and said, wow, it's great. You don't have to worry about flushing in the middle of the night and waking everybody up. <laughs> Come on, May. May. Welcome. So it's 49 degrees in here right now at about 9 o'clock in the morning on a cloudy early March day. It's pretty good. So it's pretty much a post and beam. It's all locally harvested wood for the most part, except for a couple of these roof rafters. Um, and most of the windows and doors are all recycled. They're all donated. We had to buy the greenhouse polycarbonate material for the roof. And the system that we're using here is, is passive heating. So the sun comes in during the day and warms the space. And one of the things you find with a greenhouse is that you can get excess heat pretty quick if the sun's out. And so what we have created is something we call a climate battery. There's a thermostat down here closer to where the plants are and there's a thermostat way up there past the rice. And the thermostat will trigger a fan at the top of that green pipe and it will draw that excess warm temperature down through that green pipe. In this case, we're blowing warm air down in and out through those little holes into the sand below our feet. And then it exhausts here cooler. And so the whole idea is you take excess heat during the day and you bank it like a battery. Bank it in the ground, bank it in the ground, bank it in the ground. So it gives you a way of extending the season using a passive system um, that's all powered by solar panels on the roof. And the front yard was an area that I had to mow every week through the summer and didn't really provide us with a lot of value back. And we spent about two days in total sheet mulching the front yard, building garden beds. And last year we got, it was about almost 100 pounds of potatoes out of the front yard. Um, I weeded it maybe an hour over the cold summer 
and just it was heavily mulched and the walkways are just wood chips that came from the neighbor's property. So I think for our neighbors and other folks that know us in the community, they don't see us out there toiling. <laughs> and so they say, wow, they you know, beautiful fruit and it's good, some good vegetables and they have things happening and we see them busy working, busy teaching, off doing stuff with the kids. When people come and they say, oh wow, what's your favorite piece of the project? Is it the, is it the greenhouse bio shelter? Is it the you know, forest garden? It's the soil. And you can't see it unless you have that real connection to it or you actually take the time to dig into it. But I think that might be the legacy of the project.